chance to redeem yourself from that last set you made some careless mistakes but they can be overcome the beautiful thing about getting in action with any player is that if you lose a set you can always flip a coin and try your luck again oh Colin he overrolled he's hooked himself to me like he's looking at kicking the cue ball onto the side rail to play for the 13 in the side pocket. Side pocket. No good. It's going to be ball in hand. Missed it.
Even if it gets out of line once in a while. All the way up the rail. Oh. Rolled out. Nice little drift. Yeah. I'm not sure if the two-way side of that shot is on. I'm not sure if Colin can see all of the 13 or enough of it to make it in the side. Well, you got to swing at something here. Yeah, but if he can't see the 13, he's got a difficult shot on the 12. Which, if you hit it nice speed, though, it's yeah, going to be into play. So you want to almost shoot it to be towards the, the short rail. And you want to shoot it soft because if it rattles, he might actually use it as cover for the five. Yeah, it's going to be in play if it rattles. Oh, it goes in. <laughs> it goes in. Is this going to be first blood by Colin? If he yeah. <laughs> Good call, Brooke. I don't know. We'll see. I tried to stop myself. I didn't want to do the commentator thing, but <laughs> the other one. Yeah, yeah, out. yeah. Oh, uh, he looks perfect, though. Like, I, this isn't my fault, whatever happens right, to me. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, truth be told, you know, he's... Okay, never mind. Let's not think about the past. But That's he right. Has, it's a he brand did miss new. an eight in the That's last right. set. It's a brand new shoe. Yeah, brand new shoe. And uh, it's 1-0, race to nine. Okay, we're bumping up the resolution a little bit too for the live stream side, so hopefully uh, this will be a little nicer. So you just got off work, huh, I Brooke? did, yes. My wonderful 7 a.m. to 3.30 shift. Yee. Well, I chose that. That is by my choice, my design. And it's um, if I ever do want to hang out late at the pool room, I can take a nap and then come back and be here all night. And you know, it's a it's a it's a good it's a good option. You know. So, yeah. Some people are day people. Some people are night people. Uh, well, I am a night person, but you got to make adjustments. You got to do what you got to do. That's all. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Ephraim went to take a quick break. Colin says, <laughs> I'm going to take one, That's too. That's cute. So. Look at the little clappy face. Yeah, How cute is that? <laughs> There's a link somewhere. For the emojis? Yeah, for the emojis in Ustream chat. Oh, look at that. It's so cute. <laughs> I like the like, clap emoji. Uh, here you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> So I think, I think this, oh, no, Efren's back. Yeah, okay, Efren good. Back so I thought that was a practice calling. break, but no, Efren's back. Anything on the break? Let's see. Oh, I think a stripe uh, went down. Yep. Are they playing you are what you make or it's open? No, they're playing open, open BCA rules, basically. Call it if it's not straight in and uh, right. Call pocket, not call, call shot. Call the eight. Yeah, just call the eight ball. No, no, no pocket markers here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I might get banged around by some of the APA guys, but I, I, pl I play in the masters division of APA, and we t we tend to just point. Oh yeah, well they've they've <laughs> stopped using the pocket markers for well, the most for part. For general league, it's still yeah. very much in. In the, I played a women's tournament really? about six weeks ago, and we were marking them. Hey, you know some of the players. You've got to be careful because some players are l relaxed about the rules in APA, but some are like real sticklers for the rules. Yeah, 
and I just don't want to argue it. So, mm-hmm. what does it matter if you mark your pocket? Like, it doesn't matter. No. When I first started playing APA a long, long time ago, I thought once you marked it, you had to shoot it to that hole. <laughs> like, that you couldn't pick it back up off the table. <laughs> That's kind of like a last pocket thing. I right? was like, I was like, APA is so advanced. We play last pocket. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seven five combo. My teammates uh, cured me of that pretty quick, though. Oh. Uh, it's cue balls. Like that's probably the worst place that cue ball could have ended up for him. He's gonna have to play a safety. But you know what? This safety requires, in a way, that you kind of hide behind your opponent's ball. Yeah, which is tough. Because if you're not right up on it... Oh, he's, he's going the other way. I would have tried to... Oh, it got there. He did hit a rail, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh. Yeah, the two got a good little bounce off of it. Okay, good. Mr. King Kong in the house. Oh! King Kong's probably looking at Carlo Beato play Steve Lingelbach. And he's probably going to say, Hey, Carlo, you spot. took my action. Yeah. Oh, have they been playing all weekend? Apparently, Steve and King Kong played the other day. I think uh, King Kong got the best of them. Hey, when you don't show up on time, guess what? People, people snake your action. Yeah, it's true. No harm, no foul. What a beautiful shot. Does the nine go? Uh, I'm with Turbo on this one. There's times where like people point. And then the guy in the chair wants to act like he didn't see, and it's a shark to, like, where'd you point? And it interrupts your whole stream of play. Yeah. It's tough. I like the eye contact thing and say, hey, corner pocket, you know. Well, I, I think you're supposed to be paying attention. So if you didn't hear me call it or see me point to it, <laughs> I think you're a SOL. But, you know, maybe that's just me. Uh, yeah, but... There's, like I said, there's always those rule sticklers that can say, hey, you didn't call it, I rules didn't see you there. call it. You know, I, I do believe that if a rule's in play, you should play by it. Yeah. And that, you know, it's, it's tournaments and leagues have their, because they're big time tournaments and leagues, they can have whatever rules they want. Yeah. I always swore that one day if I ever, like, won the lottery, I'd have a tournament where before you could make the money ball, you had to quack like a duck. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And if you didn't, you'd lose the game. Mm-hmm. And that's and there would be no if ands or buts. That was the rule, and I didn't care how like what an asinine rule it was, just to prove a point that right. it's all about the money. If I'm willing to put up big money, what a shot! Then I can I can make whatever rule I want. Of course, some of the money's not big enough for them to be making these rules. Well, with. when you're playing for money. Oh well, that's you gotta it's get a whole other thing. Up. Absolutely. Wow, Efren made this. You know, played a tough shot to open up the inning, and uh, to Colin's disappointment, Ooh. he's going to have to wait for Efren to finish shooting. One to one. I'm sure Colin's thinking, man, that safety wasn't good enough. What am I going to do now? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, one to one. <laughs> um, can I get. Do they have hot chocolate? I think so. If they have hot chocolate, I'd like hot chocolate.
Pretty nice bust up right there. It's not, it's not raining here in um, in Bellflower. It w it's very windy. It's because it's windy. They're giving me grief on my hot chocolate. Ask if it was raining. <laughs> Thank you. hesitated a little on the I think he's just thinking about where he wants to oh, how he wants to baby. execute beautiful shot um, he's gonna be all right I was just curious if it was gonna come up enough he could shoot it in the side it's gonna be interesting to get shape Cut it into the same pocket as the eight ball and come off of the ten. Wow. Man, it's nice when I call it. It's so good. I couldn't hit it like that to save my life, but I called it. That's just that's just so good. So accurate. That went in like a like a you know, twenty foot putt by Tiger Woods. The only way to beat Efren is to tell him jokes while you're playing. That that was true pocket speed. <laughs> really? Is that it? Yeah, that's what well, no, I'm not I'm not saying I'm saying that's what it. <laughs> Have you ever seen Efren Reyes get, like, sharked by anything? <laughs> Sounds like there's a story there. Well, no, like, but... So when he quit smoking, everything was a shark. Like, if you and I sitting up here, like, talking, he'd have been making eye contact with us, like, just glaring at us. So that's why I laughed, is because, like, at one point, there wasn't anything that wasn't a shark. That's funny. That was like 15 years ago, huh? Yes, it was. Maybe, well, actually, 97, 98. Long time. 98, 99, sorry. Somewhere in there. Yeah, but for a while there, we didn't think he'd be able to shake it. It just, I mean, it took him about a year and a half to get two years maybe where he got back to where he was playing good after quitting smoking wow I remember gosh the last time I it took me that long to get back in stroke was when I was coming back I quit pool for like seven years when I came back it took me a year to get my stroke back I mean I, and I was just really discouraged and imagine that's at, at like our level
Yeah, it was very frustrating. It was it was it was frustrating and hard to watch. I mean, you just you know there's that whole other level, but just weren't seeing the balls. Hi, Tos. Santos Sambohon Jr. in the house. Hopefully we'll see Geraldine here soon. I figured she'd be coming after work, so I gave her a little more time. Yeah. I think she might carpool with uh, with Brian Cady, who's... Oh, that'll be good, because that then y'all can, can go drive back. That way I can go back home in one car, yeah. shot seems like Colin doesn't have any problem uh, with his long shots it actually seemed kind of a strength for him you know what it could be you you mentioned that he plays at um, Santa House, Monica yeah House of Billions. and the rails play a little bit different than here there's a reaction mm -hmm. that's different than we're used to so he might be that might be more what he's trying to adjust to that's very true I agree, wannabe. He, he, that's that's very accurate. When he struggles, he pulls it back and just plays real A B C. The guys that are all rhythm, it's it's hard to get back in stroke. Uh oh, Colin needs a roll. And he got it. Yeah, he definitely did. Of course, <laughs> you need a roll every time you miss, don't you? has in mind here. Is he looking at the six in the side? Oh no, he's oh, playing no. safe. He played a good safety. Oh. Very good safety. He sort of buried the uh, cue ball under the eight. So he took away pretty much any shot. Colin could have had. Can he bank the nine? I don't think he can bank the nine to the corner. He might have to play safety back here. I don't know how much the nine, banking the nine, you're going to have to break out the 10 ball with, mm -hmm. the, with mm -hmm. the bank. So unless you're very confident on the bank, it's not, I wouldn't want to mess with that one yeah, tight of ball of Ephraim. It's, it's not the shot to play. And actually, I think... <laughs> He's cutting Efren left a 11. little window for the 11, yeah. This would be a good shot if it goes in. Oh. He, I don't think he, he was hooked by the eight, but I think he thought, like, you know, you just do it that last minute, you kind of shoot away a little bit. Have you noticed his, his bridge? How short his bridge is, Colin? Mm-mm, I'll try and pay attention. Dave Hemma in the house. I'm good, how are you? Remember this game, Dave? Eight ball? Remember this game? Oh God, do I remember this game. This guy's like one of the best at this thing, so it'll be fun to watch. It's creative. That's absolutely right, man. He's playing a guy named Colin Angle, who's from West LA, plays out of a bar called the 90 Wests in Culver City, a sports lounge. And uh, he also plays he also plays League, Santa Monica House of Billiard League, the Carl Yito in-house league. Oh, okay. Yeah, Carl is good. Uh-oh. Well, there we are. Drama from Efren. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> is, is, uh, is there any pressure here, or is it just kind of, oh, okay. $100, uh, $100 a race, race to nine. Yeah. No pressure for Colin, that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, but still, it's, it's nice. A little bit of practice for effort. 
how long you guys been here? Just started or? I think they got here about one. I got here after work about four, a little after four. Wow, you got, they've been playing that long? He had somebody else he was playing before this. Oh, yeah, these guys started at three. Oh, okay. All right. So Efren's getting his arm loose, getting to play everybody. That's good. Good job. I think we, ha I think we have a match with Boosty coming after this at six. Um, yeah, and Carlos is here too? Yeah. God, everybody's here, huh? All right. Love it. Do you know Mario, uh, Brooke? I guess she does. <laughs> I guess I you do. Everybody. I guess you know Mario. <laughs> Shout out to Dave Hemma. It's nice to see him here playing Little Pool. I do know uh, okay. Mario from on Q. He hangs with Lila and that crew, so I'm. Ah, okay. Yeah. My, my second home when I'm in San Diego. Yeah, Mario's like, I just want to know what kind of game I can get. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to play the guy even, man. He's going to kill me. He's a nice guy. Three foul. Unfortunately, most eight ball does not include three foul. It includes a six shot stalemate. Yeah, but, but you know what? He's playing horrible in tournaments. It doesn't mean for the money he's playing horrible. Oh. Um, Al told me. Oh. Al told me that he's, uh, playing all well, that I watched him play in the first Sunday, or the first Saturday last month of yeah. January. Uh -huh. He did not play well. So maybe that's what he saw as well. Good eye, wannabe. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. Uh, an observation was made that uh, Colin is so tall that um, when he's shooting long shots, he's actually seeing all the way into the pocket. But when uh, when the shots are close up, he seems to be aiming out of the table into the next table. Whether or not you meant that as a joke, it actually seems so. to it actually it's seems to be a little bit more. Yeah. There's some truth to it. <laughs> Oopsie. These are tough matches for Efren. To stay mentally uh, involved. Yeah. And tonight he switches gears to play one pocket. So, you know, that'd be interesting. But I'm, th I'm thrilled, personally, to be streaming 8-Ball again. It's nice. Hey, now. I'm just going to put it out there. This is my least favorite pool game. Is it really? Uh, big table 8-Ball. Really? Yeah. Because for the top players, it's just one more rotation game. And for us bad players, it just takes for freaking ever. <laughs> it's not fun. You heard it from Brooke. That's right. 
And I did say least favorite, by the way. I didn't say I hate it or anything. Right, like right, that. right, 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 right. Yeah. I'd still be rather. I'd still rather be playing it's this like, than what's doing your least almost favorite anything flavor else. Flavor of ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> if you love ice cream, uh, probably chocolate. Vanilla is my very favorite because I love putting stuff and doing stuff with it. So, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's the same thing. Every yeah. flavor, any time. Well, Colin gave that away. He had an opportunity. Efren tried to give it away, but it just didn't happen. So it's 3-1. And uh, the Railbirds are starting to fill up the room. We have Carlo Biotto playing Steve Lingelbach on table eight. They're playing one pocket. Tony Torres has started hitting balls on table one. Every once in a while. We got King Kong warming up on the back table. King Kong's playing on table ten. Dave Hemma has got a rack. Has got a rack of balls and he's hitting them. Yeah, and a few of the local players playing some one pocket here and there. Uh, yeah, I Always think nice to see. EH is in a one pocket game. Oh, you're, you're your buddy, I think so. Hmm. Isn't he playing the bionic guy? <laughs> oh, is he playing Steve? I think so. Oh, that's funny. Bionic man, yeah. <laughs> it's, I never remember his name now. That's all I remember. So it's starting to feel, even though it's a Monday, it's starting to feel like, like a nice Sunday afternoon. I may need to call in work tomorrow. This might be a late night. Yeah. Meanwhile, back to this story. Colin's got, uh, he's got control of the table right now. He's going to use this bridge. And actually, uh, if he can just keep it together, I, I actually, I like him running out here. The nine poses a small problem, but it does, um, um, it, it does go past the, the five. It's just a matter of getting good on it. I think getting it's the, the right only, angle. Yeah, it's the only one where there, I can see there being any kind of a problem. I don't know, but he may have the perfect angle to go there now. Off the ten ball. Yeah, like a... He looks... A no, I don't know. He looks like he's on the wrong side. I don't know about that. I, I agree that's how... Well, yeah, actually from this angle we're looking at a different camera angle and it, it definitely does look like it's on the, the other side. Now, another alternative would be to play the 12 and maybe come back up table for the 9 of the side if you play the 12, but not right now, but make position for it. Mm -hmm. And he can play the 14 to the 9. See now there, I think I would have tried to come, well, I don't know, I like my draw shot better than I like maneuvering amongst all those balls. Mm -hmm. I think I'd have tried to get a little less angle on that 11 and use that to pull down on the 9. That's a good, good idea too. He's, he evidently has a whole different plan going on. Yeah. He may be using that as his out ball. Shoot the 14, Absolutely. the 9, and then Absolutely. the 8. To me, that's a little risky. I, well, you, you saw me. That's the only ball on the table I thought was a problem. So. Well, here you go. Okay, so now you shoot the 12 to the 9 in the side. And there you go. For us. You gonna ask the question? He's asking a question. You gonna ask the, a, a question? Why one pocket? And you gonna be looking? Why one pocket? Open it this this okay. is Mr. One Pocket. Is this Mr. One Pocket? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna ask you guys why one pocket. Wait, maybe we should just open this later on camera. Hey, go ahead. 
The one pocket ghost? The oh, ghost. Yeah. <laughs> Well, all right. Why one pocket? Why one pocket? And then you're in Brook. Find out why. Write a book. A foot stick. One pocket. Yeah. Um, so Catfish gave us the Is one pocket ghost. Shaker? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's a salt shaker. But he says that it's our mojo to write a, a one pocket book now. Okay. And he says we're going to write a book that's a foot thick. That's what he was saying there okay. at the end. A one pocket book. I told you I have one goal in life, my whole life, is to get into the One Pocket Hall of Fame. I have no shot to get there playing wise. <laughs> Maybe I've got to do some the way stuff. To go. Yeah, Maybe I got to. I got to make some maneuvering happen. Well, speaking of maneuvering, uh, he missed. I gotta the nine. say, yeah, I think Colin got perfect on the nine, and Hi, he missed it. You like hey. all that? Take some of that. Welcome back. <laughs> Django has uh, entered the building, and w let's catch him now. There he is. <laughs> he is so entertaining. Oh, yeah. He's just a great guy. I had so much fun playing him with, and Efren together oh, with Tang. Doubles? I mean... Tang really kind of was a... a Tang kind of blew it a, for yeah, me, to yeah. tell you the truth. I, I love the guy, but I blew it well, for him because he apparently I, tried to telling me that he didn't he, want to he play did the match. He did try and tell you that. He did try and tell you it wasn't a good game. He wanted a spot, but here's we the thing. We got a spot. Yeah, but he wanted a legitimate spot. Um, Tang, Tang doesn't like to play just to play. Like, like you or I might get in a game just to be in a game. You know, it's been a long time I've known him, and I, I actually did not know that about him. Yeah, he's, he's, he wants to practice. That's why he's one of the best practicers I've ever seen. Right. He bears down when we're playing for dinner against me even. Like there's no, there's no let Brooke win a couple of games. Like it's yeah. hardcore. Yeah. <sighs> and that's and that's. I but mean, I didn't get that feeling when I was playing with. No, him because Scotch in the doubles. beginning he was laughing and he was having a good time, but then it started to get a little hot and heavy, and and he didn't enjoy that feeling. I think he got a little perturbed by. You mean it. when we were down six <laughs> zero? Yeah. I, well, I couldn't believe he kept giving you back the break. No offense, you have a great break, and you, you came back into it. Yeah. But it, when you, like, had trouble breaking, like, three breaks in a row, I think maybe I'm just going to see how, how I break. Yeah. Just to switch things up. Yeah. I had fun. You should have. It was, it, was, it was fun. I told Melinda that we could play. I said, I said we can play. Play Boosty and Efren? No, we're going to take one apiece. We're going to play them. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> Scotch scumbles against each other. Yeah, me and Efren against Belinda and, and That's a great Bustamani. Idea. We'd have a great time. Actually, one of my favorite things is playing doubles with these guys because I always come away with, like, one good shot. Mm-hmm. And in a way, that's that's makes it all worth it, you know. Yeah, when um, years and years ago, when they used to be here more often, Efren and I got a few games against people like legitimate action games where we'd play and get a, a big spot because I was a terrible player back then. I'm not good now, but I was awful, and um, and it it really was amazing watching him and like that's what kind of got me into loving one pocket because mm -hmm. we started out playing partners at that. Interesting. What do you do with the eight ball, Daniel? Uh, yeah, I was going to get to that, actually. The eight ball... Um, you know what? Never mind. He missed that on purpose, I think. Because he knew that he knew that it was like more work for him. More work for him to try to get to the eight ball. Don't you agree? I mean... I think he half-assed it. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just missed it. He's like, well, I'll just shoot it like this. Even though I know it doesn't really go like this, I'll just shoot it like this. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. Love that.
well, this is a this is actually a good opportunity. His, again, for Colin. his only thing is is um, the three and the eight ball. So. Well, fortunately for him, he's in a position right now where he can he, he can manufacture shape uh, to break this out with either the seven or the two? the six or the two. I think I roll the two forward and use the seven to break it out. Yeah, you could use the seven as well. Um, but then if you if he tries to do it now, there's a slight no, no, no. bit I'm of not, angle. I'm not trying to break it out. I'm going to roll up. I'm going to use the two to roll up to get shape on the seven to break it. Yeah. Actually, I think the three goes to one of those corners. You think it, There's a little bit of space between the eight and the three. It could go into the... Uh, yeah, he's looking at it right now. Did you see that? He just dropped, yeah. dipped down to look at it. It's just... It might be tight. so close. And it's right next to the black ball. And I don't know. Old eyes, it makes it tough to see. Yeah, I know. He elected to play... Oh, he's going to shoot the two in the, the side. Six, yeah. First and play the two now. He went a little straight though. Is he too straight? Hmm. That's just oh my gosh. Just enough? It is it's just enough. enough. But how's he going to get shape on the seven? He's got to come around three rails. He's got to come around three rails. He's got to use like side and just just throw this ball in and, and swing around and come to the like he he should be in front of the pocket. That he's he might taking the three. In. He could be in a lot of trouble here because the yeah. side the side spin he might end up hitting those two stripes up at the top of the table. I mean. Should have. Cause he's gonna hit it so hard. Oh my god, get lucky. <laughs> he got kind of lucky. He can see it. He could play a stop shot and play a very good safety here. I gotta tell you though, from this distance, I know it looks like it. Oh, I'll just stop I kinda it. I kind of like, let's, you wanna just switch around and we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll just watch the big so screen? Easier. It is easier to do it. Because we get a little, there's angle. By the way, guys, for, the, for those of you who don't know, you know, I've split the signal at hard time so that you can actually watch the live stream on the big screen TV here at hard time. It's times. so much fun. And do you know that if you turn the volume up, you would be able to hear it as well? Oh, us? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay not hearing us. No, I don't want to so hear it either. <laughs> <laughs> So I tried to make a game with Carlo today. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. What's? Uh, we're we're he's gonna give me a up? spot. We're gonna play for an ice cream. Oh, right on. You know my 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 normal bet. It's undecided on the spot yet. Oh, ice the ice cream. cream is the bet, but what's the spot? With any Filipinos, it's ice cream. Sometimes it's a um, like dinner or something. But I asked Carlo for the eight in the breaks. He said no. What? <laughs> Playing ten ball. I wanted the same spot that I played Efren and Boosty. Does he does he know who you are? <laughs> <laughs> he knows me. I thought he did. Yeah, he knows me. He maybe, saw me maybe. he saw me lose to Lee Brett in the same event that he played. He's he's kind of double. He's soft. Well, that, you know, not that, but you know, nice. Maybe maybe Jell Jay Helfer told him not to g give me any any weight. Don't give that Daniel guy anything at all. Yeah, too, yeah. <laughs> sounds sounds right. My name up again. Did the three go by the eight? You never did figure that out. He bumped the three to get by the eight. Oh boy. <laughs> it's t 
tough. It's tough to play after. And it's a painful lesson, you know? I mean, it was painful for me playing a one pocket. I had a lot of fun playing the 10 ball, but it was playing the one pocket for me was tough. I think that playing 10 ball, he has a little more fun. I think with one pocket, mm -hmm. he feels like he has to come with those big 15 and outs all the time. Yeah. So it changes. <clears throat> Well, for me, too, though, in rotation, nine ball, ten ball, mm -hmm. I know my ability. With one pocket, I'm still kind of discovering myself, you know? So I'm, like, really hard on myself when I play one pocket. Uh, you have to remember in a match to have that I really fun for win. yourself. Most yeah. of the time when I play one pocket, i actually been realizing a lot more lately that I'm, I'm reckless more often than I should be. Yes. And... You know, there's matches I get into where I don't take it too seriously and I still just, I go for stuff I shouldn't go for. But when I played Efren, I really tried to like execute. I was really like, you know, but that was like a tough game for me. That was painful because I just realized that I, I needed more seasoning. I needed to learn a lot about the game. Your EH is uh, taking the balls up to the, the counter. So, you know. Oh, okay. He, he couldn't. No one was taking the bait, huh? Well, no. He he had he had a fishing partner there for a long time. Oh, he was playing Steve Austin. Yeah. I don't know. It's five to one now, Daniel. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I am. I'm. I'm like. Well, I understand. I'm. I'm such a, a wonderful conversationalist. I could. I can easily see why you'd be distracted. Well, no. I was. I was also like <laughs> mentally flossing over over my match with. I was like back in time thinking about that match with Efren. I should have made that shot. I shouldn't have shot at yeah, that shot. Yeah. I just. Uh, it was just. I mean, one pocket, it's just so hard to play him. Nice, nice shot on that to bump the 13 out. All these balls are in close quarters. It's nice to watch him dissect this kind of thing, you know? It's kind of his comfort zone, though, with like balls all like that. I mean, it's it's very much a one pocket to lifestyle, yeah. and he has the other pockets to shoot at if needed. Efren's an artist, man. He really is, you know? I mean, he's kind of like the Picasso of pool. He got there. Whew. I have to say too, I think I think Efren's been pretty easy on him, you know. A lot of dry breaks, giving him a chance, you know. Efren does try to play customer pool, but at some point you still have to run out. Like it's not it's not fun for anybody if you just keep missing balls back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and especially not your opponent. Yeah. So he goes back to the Philippines, right? When's when's he due back in? No schedule for next visit yet. No kidding. Okay. I'll be in negotiations for July. Do we have any set dates for any of that yet? For any of what? Any tournaments on the West Coast in July? Ladies and gentlemen, we are working feverishly to provide uh, the West Coast with the West Coast Swing. West Coast Swing um, took a sabbatical for three, four two years? years. Two years. 
14 and 15. Yeah, and, t and this is 16. Oh, so we're trying to get it back for 16. Yeah. The West Coast Swing is a trifecta of tournaments that take place immediately before the BCA Nationals in Las Vegas, enabling players the opportunity to travel from uh, the northern part of the coast of California all the way down to Los Angeles and then swing over to Las Vegas for the BCA Nationals. Traditionally, it started with the Cole Dixon Memorial Tournament, followed by the West Coast Challenge at California Billiard Club, and then followed by the Hard Times 10 Ball. And we are hoping to close, we're hoping to tie up all the loose ends, uh, hopefully within the next month, and give you an official announcement as to the West Coast Swing. So when we have those details, I'll have more details on their next yeah, visit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. But tentatively, actually, we're looking at July 1st and 2nd, and then every weekend after that until Vegas. Missed another straight in. On the four ball? Yeah. Mm. You know what? I think that, that uh, the, the wanna banger, what he said about him being so tall. Might be very accurate. It might be very accurate because I'm noticed, or maybe he just has an, uh, a, a vision issue that we don't know about. A closer. Like, like short-sighted, or what do they call it, nearsighted? Yeah. Maybe he doesn't know about it, you know? But I, I have seen him consistently miss close shots. And he makes those long ones like they're And he's consistently like making hangers. the longer ones, yeah. Crazy. Dark Mark was in today. Yeah. It's his birthday. Yes, it is his birthday. Yeah. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to Mark, Mark. Barba. Who's been woofing at me now for like two weeks straight. Really? Yeah. I'll play him, I just don't have time. I just haven't had time lately. Uh-oh. <laughs> My friend's smiling to himself. Efren's like the only guy I know. When he misses, you kind of welcome his reaction. You know? Was it you that was telling me this about him? Uh, that, you know, because he's called the magician, he comes up with so many creative shots. And I was told that one way he learned them was he would see people make mistakes like where they would accidentally make a ball or something. So that And then he would he would take note of that and start like trying to figure out how to actually do that consistently. It was long after the the magician tagline um because this the the article came out after 96 97 in that range. Uh -huh. Um but it it quoted him as saying that he watches bad players to see how they play so that he can take what they do and make it work kind of a thing. Right. So if that's where you're going towards Yeah, it, maybe if I'm misquoting you, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I don't know that that was me. I'm just saying that that's where that would have come from, I uh -huh. think. Yeah. I used to laugh and say, that's me that he watches the bad player, you know? <laughs> like, so. Oh, this, uh, Efren, if you're watching this now... <laughs> No, because I always YouTube. said, you know, when I when you start Look me playing, up. there's tons of me. I'm like, I'm horrible. <laughs> when you start playing, I used to tell people in here, they'd be like, Brooke, that doesn't go, or Brooke, that doesn't work, or yeah. whatever, and yeah, I'd be yeah. like, just shut your face, yeah, leave because me alone. unless I know it doesn't go, I'm. It goes sometimes. Like I right. do some weird English, I don't even know I'm putting on it, and I make yeah. that ball. Yeah. So just leave me be. Right. 
So I would laugh. That's funny. But I think that's the same kind of uh, take. Mm -hmm. Seven to one. I think we were all kind of expecting a different type of match here. You know, Colin drew first blood, right? I'm going to tell you, if you never played under the lights, the bright lights of table six at hard times when you're on stream, you just don't understand the pressure that goes on. I'm so used to them, like even playing. Do you have trouble playing without them? No, I don't. Actually, now that you th I think about it, where was I the other day? I was like, gosh, this table's dark. It's dark. It's because you're, I'm telling you, it's because you're I'm used to this. I get used to these yeah. lights. Wired space. I, um, I actually got into a fight with a, a, a teammate of mine because she played a little better than me at the time. And she made the comment that um, there's nothing that you know that I don't already know. And I looked back at her and I said, if Efren can learn from players that play under her, him, who are you? <laughs> it, was like, it was the start of the end of our, uh, our teammate. But <laughs> it's kind of how I think about things. I think that it doesn't matter if you're better than me, the same level, or under me. You see things differently, and maybe what you see will help me see something a little clearer. Right, right. What I love about pool is it's so competitive that no matter how good or how bad you are, you'll always find someone that you like match up with yeah. that, uh, all the time that you, you know, you just want to keep playing until you, uh, obviously until you feel like you've, you're ready to move on to the next level. Well, you know, it used to be more like that, right? My dad tells me like the stories of the horrible. good old days and he's like, you know, when we played, we didn't get spots. We didn't do all that. We just played. We played our level until yeah. we got better and we moved up and then I'm up and... You know, Geraldine, <laughs> Geraldine mentioned it uh, yesterday. It reminded me, because we've talked about it before, that in, uh, in Europe, they really don't have handicap tournaments. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about our handicap tournaments. When we took over hard times, there were no handicap tournaments mm -hmm. anywhere in the area. And we wanted to bring a tournament that was for the B and under players that they never had an opportunity to win. They came in and played, they spent their money on table time and practice and never had an opportunity to win a tournament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we and developed- they, they were probably disgruntled about that. Not really, like because it was just what you were used to. So we were trying to do a reward system mm -hmm. and um, we developed the Thursday night tournament here that still goes, but when we had the room, it was a um, limit of a B player. Mm -hmm. So no A players um, were allowed to play. and. From there, it has spawned... Well, if, there was always Danny Kay's. I, I apologize. Danny Kay's always had the game spots. They didn't do ball spots. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it just spawned. Now, every you can't hardly find a, a non-handicap tournament. You have, like, the fir the Sundays here at Hard Times. Mm -hmm. That's, like, <laughs> that's all I know. The one game spot. Yeah. There's Thursdays here. That's a, that's that's, that's a, handicap. That's a big handicap deal. Yeah. No, but uh, Golden Q, Hard Times, yeah, Danny K's, Metro, um, everybody wants Rack right and now. Q. Everything's it's a handicap like a, tournament. It's almost like a uh, what do they call it? A preconceived, uh, a pre what is it? <laughs> I've lost the, the term. I don't know, but my favorite tournament. They used to have a Wednesday night tournament here that was a non handicap tournament. Yeah, was race to three. And uh, I think, actually, I shouldn't say it was non-handicap. It was loser break. Yeah. Race to three, loser break. And um, that was my favorite tournament because I knew I wasn't going to win, but I got mm -hmm. to break and try mm -hmm. and run out, mm -hmm. and I could kind of gauge myself against mm -hmm. the better players. So. Oh, uh, yeah, a, pre, a, 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 a foregone conclusion. There you it's go. It's a foregone conclusion now that every uh, has to have a handicap. tournament has to have handicap. You know, the way we did it back east was when I lived in Boston. I lived there for five years. Mm -hmm. The way we did it back east was the A's played 
the A's played the A's and the B's, and the B's, play, you know, you'd have A B tournament, B C tournament, yeah. C D tournament. So you could the D's move would up, never play the A's. Right, right. The, the, you know, you'd have divisional tournaments, mm -hmm. which is somewhat like how the APA does it. You know, highs and lows. Yes. But I, I really enjoyed the divisional format because you're all playing each other even. And, and, you're you're, and you're working your way up you're a You're getting an opportunity to play somebody who plays a little better than you as opposed to me playing somebody that plays four balls or five balls better than Right, you. right. Anyway. But it's true. Once again, you know, it's a, it is just, you know, automatically assumed that you know, most tournaments are... Handicap now. Did you see that? Three yeah. ball. Missed the three. I always Two inches from like, the pocket, honey. I, I know, but you've got Efren and Alex over here talking pretty loud in Tagalog. The guy is already under the heat. I, I know. Just, Will you throw something at Alex, please? I think it's rude. <laughs> and he acts like it, they both act like that's just fine. And I'm just like, dude, like, I, I, I have to remove myself from that conversation. Yeah. Oh, it's all right. Efren says, here's a gift. into a match with Efren, Ef, uh, Francisco and uh, Mario. Ten ball, race to seven. Gets the eight ball and the first break. Okay. You got, you got him in a trap. <laughs> Mario says Mario's trapping trap. Francisco. I love it. Hey, come on over here, Mario. Slide on over here. I just want to, let's do a quick audio interview. Oh, where's the question? What's in your case? What cue? Yeah. Like, we have Actually, a question. Actually, it's good. Yeah, we should ask you that stuff. Um, we're going to have a match between uh, uh, Francisco Bustamante and this young gentleman I have here named Mario. Uh, tell, us, tell us about yourself. Um, play pool <laughs> in San Diego. What's your last name, by the way? Uh, Negos. Negos. Negos, like Legos, but with an N. Yeah. Um, yeah. Play out on cue. Play out on cue. Um, work at Nordstrom. Got a wife, a daughter. They might be watching later. I got to send them the link. Um, love pool. Try to play as much as I can, but you know, it's hard to get to the pool hall when you got bills to pay. I didn't know about the Nordstroms. It explains the natty attire every time oh, I yeah. see you. <laughs> That's my job, dressing people. So, yeah, you, you told me earlier, you're a haberdasher. Haberdasher. Fancy I love word that. for salesperson. Love that. That's truly like one of the oldest trades, you know? I, I guess so. Yeah, everybody's selling all the, the accessories, right? It's it's all about putting everything together. The everything. haberdashery, yeah. whole store, anything you need. So how's this event been going for you? Well, we're just we're just happy to be here with uh, with Efren and uh, Boosty here, and uh, it's also another treat to have Carlo here. Yeah, I love it when Hard Times uh, has a little business, you know, has some action because there's. There's some seasonal slow times here, and we're just we're just thrilled, you know. Yeah, I came up here to practice one day, hoping to do something. There was not one soul in the whole building. I have a picture. Everything was empty. I couldn't believe it. And I was like, yeah, maybe I should have made a call before it came up. That's always a good idea. Are any of these guys staying for the Swanee? No, I don't think anybody's really staying for the Swanee. They're going back to the Philippines and actually no plans to come back. Uh, well, they'll be back. But like, they'll be back. Um, U.S. Open, they're usually here for, but we don't have any definitive plans set up yet. Oh, okay. No solid dates, so we, nothing that we can announce right now. What month is that, the U.S. Open? October. Oh, okay. It's going to be a while. So how do you like it when you 
when you when you match up with these guys? Because I know you you play them, you know, a fair amount. You know, I, I I love it matching up with these guys when I can afford to do it. I, I would I would never stop doing it. You know what I mean? Like if I if I've got the money to spend, I would play them because I feel like I learned so much out of it. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, most of mostly what I learn is where I stand. <laughs> you know, and it's it's humbling. It's such a humbling experience because y y you know you know how pool is. There's always somebody you're better than. So it's always we always gravitate to those matches that we we know we can win. But then when you... You, you just, Colin just made the ball through Efren's I ball. I, I saw that. Sure I saw that. Yeah, like, yeah. That, that he gets was like the kudos a, he deserves there. A double roll there, right? I should probably sweat the match, too, while we're doing this. I haven't watched much of it. Kid plays pretty good, though, huh? Well... No. We've been noticing a few, uh, few weak... Uh, I don't want to say weak points, but a couple of weaknesses because he's been good on the long shots like this. Ouch. That was all you, Daniel. That was all, all me. You. That was all me. But you see, he actually opted to play the safety instead. Way upstairs. <laughs> that was way upstairs. Yeah, what do, you think, uh, what do you think he does? Banks it? Rail first. Rail first. Oh, that's his ball. That's right over No. No. Efren says, oh, finally, another Massé. Uh, Shit. Okay. I didn't notice that was over there. Safety? He's going this way. I see this he might safety. be calling for the side pocket, you know, three rails around. No, he's playing all safe. All safe all day. Look at this. Oh, what a beauty. What a beautiful shot. Who is that guy? Uh. <laughs> he's hooked. Ladies and gentlemen, he's hooked. And you know, to hit the right side of the ball with the speed, with the speed that he did. We have seen a couple of amazing shots from Efren in this event. <laughs> you understood that? Yeah, yeah, I did. You speak to Tagalog? Enough to know what he said. Wow. He says he did it to impress me. Oh. They're racing in nine. Okay. This is going to put effort on the hill. Colin is, you know, okay, although we're seeing some really good play from Efren, I think feel like Colin is really feeling tight right now, you know. Even these rail birds shark you. I mean, let alone the lights and the cameras and all that stuff. But you can hear everybody on the, you know, you can hear all the rail birds. The first time I played here, I played Keith McCready. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, and it was, he shark shit straight up. And I didn't know who he was. It was no big deal. It was like my first big nine ball tournament. And right before we went to play, a buddy of mine from San Diego was like, dude, good luck with Color of Money. I'm like, what? He's like, you're playing the dude from Color of Money. It's like a nightmare. Oh, I was like, and then I, I was paralyzed. I couldn't even move. Oh, I was no, like, dude, not. thanks. You, you shouldn't have said anything. And it would have been just like a normal beating. Yeah. It just magnified the entire situation. I didn't realize that people coming up didn't weren't just immediately exposed to like a table six situation. Because when I started playing pool, that was like the first table I played on. So when people aren't watching me, I'm like, look at me, darn it, look yeah. at me. I mean, well, this is the only room I know of on the West Coast that's like that, yeah. you know. Well, on there's not Sacramento. Okay, well, I mean, this is as far as I typically make it. But in San Diego. Oh, you yeah. You mean with a raised bleacher? Yeah. With a viewing area. Golden Q has that. No. Yeah. I haven't been there yet, but I gotta check it. I've seen some of your streams over there. It looks like a good pool hall. Yeah, it's a nice room to play at and uh, good they tables. They have a one pocket tournament on the second Saturday of the month that Frequent Miss tournament. Geraldine yeah. runs. And it's handicapped too, so if you're trying to learn one pocket at all. Tough game, man. I've tried. All right, but let's let's give uh, Colin his due justice here. That's, it's due gonna be eight diligence. one, Mister. Yeah, eight to one. You got you, you got to change the score, sir. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm on you. Oh, 
Carla finished her game. I wonder if she wants to do a little sum sum. She always says no next time. Mm. She's a, she's a one and done kind of gal. Oh, I don't know. I think it's just me. Like she and I have never played each other. Ah. Um, it was bo I was bobbing and weaving for a long time, and now that I'm trying to get in there, she's weaving a little. Ah. I think eventually it'll happen, but it just I think we might need to do more of a setup than a just a. Well, this no, you're okay. A lot of problems in this in this rack, and Efren just cleared a bunch. Took of care them. of one of them real quick. I think he was trying to come out far enough to shoot that seven next. If he comes a little bit yeah, more, possibly. he could have shot the seven yeah. clean. Mm -hmm. He's gonna break it out instead. <laughs> Guy's a, the guy's a genius. Uh, he looks to be... He's got a little angle on the seven, but he's fine. He he can just roll this slowly. Yeah, just like that. Oh, and misses the seven. No, I was commentating. So a chance for Colin. I, I think Collins just beat up. Collins can play somewhere else. Like he can if he wants to. I mean, he like. Oh, I see what you're. I know yeah, what you're saying. Because we're doing a camera switch. I know what you're saying. I th think. He's really yeah. Well, I don't mind if it's on. I just don't mind. Get to a point where you're like you just want it to be over. You're making mistakes. You're feeling the heat, and you just want it to be over. Yeah, yeah. About a hundred years ago, uh, Vicky Wade and I played on table one mm -hmm. when it was they were streaming for one of the women's events. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Hill Hill, and we East Mitch missed the nine ball. An a conservative estimate was six times. Oh my! God. Like each. We just missed it. In it was the, on in the same was, game. You mean? Yeah, the hill, hill. Wow. And it was the la It was the old um, table one with the, the tight pockets, and we just uh, we just couldn't. You know, people are cheering and doing what they're mm -hmm. doing, and we're just mm -hmm. like, shut up, just let us play. <laughs> you guys are killing us. They're basically straight in, but we're so sharked by the table and yeah, by everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's brutal. Well, there's that. You know. That hill hill scenario too, where y you know you sabotage yourself. Yes. You know. Yes. Where well, you I've feel, done you, that. Where I, you, 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 I mean, I honestly think it's a it's a it's a subconscious feeling like you don't deserve to win. I have a very know? hard time closing when I get ahead. I mm -hmm. can come from behind pretty like if I'm playing okay, but when I'm ahead and think I'm supposed to win, I struggle. You know, there was a period in my life when I was in my before my twenties when I was about nineteen where I would run out, like play nine ball, mm -hmm. run out seven or eight balls. And then when it came down to the money ball, there'd be like white noise in my head mm -hmm. and I couldn't think. And it was just, it was a literal white noise in my mind. Yeah. And that took years to overcome, like two years. A buddy of mine, she took, she had the same thing. I, she called it nine ball phobia. And um, she took all the nine balls one night when we were closed here at Hard Times mm -hmm. and just played nine ball with nine balls. So every ball has the same importance. Oscar Kovar does that. He brings nine balls to the... Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right. Now's the time to do something... something good here, Colin. Got a tough shot here. 
He's looking at going in the corner. I tell you what, this could be his last shot. Yeah. I like to cut back kind of to the side. I mean, maybe yeah. it didn't have that angle, but. I think he rushed through it. And that's it. <laughs> Another match for Colin with Efren Reyes. Ends in a score of eight to one, nine to one. So, we think that's about it. But uh, if Colin wants to play again, I'm gonna have to actually move him to another table. Um, so, Where did Mario go? Does as far as this you? match goes. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah, Fran but we Francisco thinking, does. Yeah. We were thinking we could, if you still want to play him, you can play him, but have to play him on another table. Just move him right here. If you still want to play him, but it just wouldn't be streamed. So it's entirely up to you. But, Colin, but you may want to say people like this. Like the brakes or something. You know what I mean? Work it out. But if you don't, if it's okay with you, you'd like to. Well, it's not that we'd like to. This guy, he came up suddenly out of nowhere from San Diego today. Everywhere he sells power, one time, over a time. It's just nothing but bullshit. Decide what you want to do. Hey, um, we're, we're going to close this out, but uh, uh, Colin, you want to say a couple of things, man? How you doing? I'm all right, I guess. A little shell-shocked. <laughs> you know, we, we noticed that you had some deadly accuracy with your long shots, and there's something going on with your short shots. Do you have an issue with being so tall and being able to see the, the shorter shots, or...? Or is this just something you don't know about either? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I've never noticed that in the past. I'll have to go back and look at it. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll have to look at that. I mean, trust me, we, we, I saw you play some long shots where I, were like, I was like, this is really low percentage, and you nailed them. And then when you, when you got to close quarters, there were some issues there. Yeah, I don't know. I, um, like I said, maybe I wasn't careful enough or I shot too fast or something. I'm not sure what happened with that, but... And I, you know, you, it wasn't for lack of chances. You've had, you had tons, yeah, you had plenty of chances. Yeah, no, I did, I, he gave me plenty of chances and I just didn't play up to snuff. So. You want to flip the coin, don't you? <laughs> I kind of do, honestly, but. Well, you're welcome to flip the coin. Um, but we are going to uh, feature a match with Francisco Bustamante and Mario Legos, or Mario Negos on your table so if you'd like what I can do is uh, we can move you to table one and I'll provide live updates I'll provide live updates and let huh you don't want to play them on table one yeah I didn't have very much luck with table one well actually there are other tables down there there's table nine is available now and table three is available now thanks a lot to Colin Angle for doing this match with us we're going to get right back. That's, that's Mario so uh, give us about 10 minutes and we're going to be right back. We're going to start this next match between Mario Negos and Francisco Bustamante.